Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here, and we are going to go ahead and get started by visiting the console first. We need to make sure that we have a pseudo password set, and if you don't, you'll need to set one. So go ahead and type in passwd, and if you already have a password, you'll see something similar to what you have here. It'll say what's your current password. Otherwise, it's going to ask you to enter a password and then enter it again. Now remember, when you type, Linux doesn't show that you've typed anything, so don't panic. Go ahead and copy the text from the video description. It starts with wget, and this is the whole thing. You'll need to make sure it's exactly what you see here. If you try to type it by hand, you'll possibly make a mistake. I definitely recommend just cut and paste. Okay, so it goes through here, and there you go. Told you it was gonna need your pseudo password. We type in our pseudo password and bang, I've got a timer running. I didn't cut any of this out because I wanted you guys to see exactly how long it took so there are no surprises. Now, if you're very uh, intimate with the Linux operating system or even just operating systems at the command line level, you may find interesting things scrolling by here in this console window. So there's a lot of things going on. It's changing your uh, file system to read write. It's installing some things that normally couldn't install. That's why you had to have your pseudo password. And then it installs all the repos and all the drivers and everything else. And according to the GitHub for this uh, application, it actually does relock your file system just to make sure you don't make any mistakes later on with something else. So there we go, about 4450. And now we're gonna go ahead and plug our dongle in. I've got it on an extender to my dock, so it looks a little bit different there. Now, it used to be in the other one that you saw a pop-up over here or you would see something. Doesn't happen anymore, just understand that it works. We connected the controller already using the standard Xbox connectivity. This is proof that it is not connected via Bluetooth. And you can see right now in the bottom left-hand corner, I am indeed using the Xbox controller and it shows up as my Xbox One Elite 2 controller. Now, what's really important about this is, while you could have plugged it in to get it to work, if you went over Bluetooth, you probably lost some features like rumble or rear paddle support. You're probably installing this because you want rear paddle support and you want uh, those back paddles. So real quick, I'm gonna jump into Ratchet and Clank here. And uh, just so you guys can see that the rumble is indeed working. And I'll show you the back paddle. We're doing Ratchet and Clank here. And you can see if I hit the back paddle, I have that map to doing my forward sprint there. And you can see everything works great. And it's all attached through the dongle. So you have minimum latency. You can connect more than one controller, as far as I know. Uh, all sorts of features by using that wireless Xbox controller adapter. It's a, it's a great thing. Okay, once you reboot, you'll probably see there's a couple of new icons on your desktop that you didn't see before. All you have to do is run one of these guys. The debug one you can probably delete unless uh, the author of the app asks you to do so to run that. And then if you try to run the install update, it will try to find an update and it doesn't go through the whole thing anymore. It just says, oh, you're all up to date, you're good. And that's really it. It's a lot easier than it was last time. All this possible due to the power of open source software. All right, listen, if you like what you saw, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You guys know what to do. As always, leave a comment. I will try to answer all of them. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks so much for watching and take care.